Hello, this is Mr. Huff, and this is a video about commercial roof systems. This goes along with the PLTW activity 3.1.4. First, let's talk about low slope roofs. Uh, this is a picture of a roof. It's covered by the EDPM layer uh, that we talked about, and you should have finished your notes about commercial roof systems at this point. Uh, I want to point out one thing. While in our models we're making these roofs flat, that is not normally the case. There's usually a slope where it drops about one or two inches from one side to the other or toward the center. And you can kind of see right here in the center, uh, this roof probably slopes down toward this so they can drain it. So uh, you do have to account for some sort of drainage from the roof. You don't want to make this like a swimming pool so when it rains, it just fills up that portion. So you always have to think about drainage. But for our purposes, we're just simply modeling this as a flat roof. But if we were going to model it realistically, we would make it slant about one or two inches from one side to the other to a drainage system. One of the things I want to point out, as you look at the skyline, what do you notice about the roofs? They're all flat. And why is this? What if you put a typical house roof on a building like these skyscrapers? So what would happen when it snows? Uh, that would build up large ice sheets on top. And as that thawed, those would slide off into the street below, causing some dangerous conditions to occur. So these buildings always have flat roofs because you don't want things falling off down into the street at that height. For the library project, the ceiling of the first floor is going to be a roof deck and that roof deck is going to be a green roof and here I've just modeled a simple green roof so here's a cross-section of what that looks like uh, and the way it works is you actually have to define it as a floor to make it a roof so it's actually the floor of the second story but it's a roof for the first floor first story so uh, in the curriculum what they want us to do is study green roofs and go in and design a roof system and I just put a real simple placeholder here where we've got metal decking and some insulation and then a big 16 inch block that represents our green roof section. It's actually a lot more complicated than this. Typical green roof construction is vegetation at the top, a growing medium underneath that. So you can see the growing medium here a filter membrane under that, a drainage layer, and this could be something like gravel, or it might be something like a, uh, a system designed for green roof drainage, and we'll look at some of those in just a moment. Underneath that, there's usually some sort of supporting panel, and below that, you'll have some sort of insulation. This is normally rigid foam. And then below that, you have a vapor barrier to kind of separate this system from the supporting structure. And then underneath this, is if it's a thin green roof, then you would use some sort of metal decking. And if it is thick like the one shown here, you would have concrete slab underneath that to support the additional weight of the green roof. Well, let's look at a few. Uh, in here, this shows really well this uh, waterproof membrane the root barrier, how those are two separate things, the insulation layer. Also, I want you to look at this drainage layer. You don't want your green roof to hang on to water. You want the water to hit the top, go through the plant system, through the substrate, and then you don't want it to pool on top of the roof. You don't want to make your roof into a swimming pool. Uh, that's one of the things about low slope roofs. You have to think about being waterproof because the water is moving very slowly across that so you've got to make sure that that roof system is watertight because it's not going to drain quickly but you don't want to pull water on top of the roof so a lot of times these drainage layers are designed like this where they have like little cups where you can retain some of the water but most of it passes through to be drained Here's another one showing that same kind of layout. So I'm just going to flip through a few of these systems here. Uh, this one is more simple. This one would be, well, it's the same kind of thing. It's showing how these this drainage system collects a little bit, but lets most of the water go through, especially if it overflows. Uh, here's another one showing that system and how the water passes through. So it goes through the plants into this section here where it's retained, passes over to the drainage systems like right you see right here. Uh, another cross-section, and I just looked for um, 
green roof systems and you can see things like this there are a lot of varieties so but you see common components uh, you will also see some diagrams online if you look for green roof systems you'll see some little diagrams like this and a lot of times the assignment they have in PLTW is pretty mysterious until you find this diagram okay where it shows if you're just uh, the different level, levels of green roof. So you have very thin all the way to very thick and another system very thin all the way to very thick. So there's a couple of different systems here. Uh, and really the big useful piece of information is showing the thickness from 4 to 15 inches and then what that translates into when that system is dry and when it's wet. So if it's 4 inches thick, you're going to reach about 26 pounds per square foot. If it goes to 15 inches thick, you're looking at 105 pounds per square foot additional load on your roof system. And you have to be aware of this as a designer or an architect. And in this system, you'll reach 85 pounds per square foot. So the ones that we are using, uh, we're using these higher numbers here for the dry and wet weight. We would probably use this value for our conservative design numbers the 69 pounds per square feet dry 105 pounds per square foot uh, for when it's saturated i wanted to show you some examples of green roofs uh, these are on commercial structures and kind of what I'm, I'm expecting to see in your library designs i want it to be both a green roof also a place for people so a lot of times you'll look at green roofs online and it's just a thin layer of plants across the top but I want structures and walkways and places for people to dwell. So let's look at a few. This one is really beautiful. This one integrates the stair systems for people to move back and forth between levels. Also solar systems integrated. And then you have like this little pond here and places to sit and just explore and enjoy the space outside. This one provides some places to lounge around as you hang out on the green roof. Notice there are some substantial uh, plants, some substantial vegetation on this. Uh, same as this one, you've got a little bit of shelter that will let water pass through. And you have like the raised flowers and raised beds around and then the seating areas and the little pathways. So these are some designs to draw inspiration from. Pergolas, picnic tables are very common. Uh, this one's kind of nice. You can see the pathways for people to walk around on the surface, uh, upper surface of this, what appears to be a large apartment complex. So they have like their own private little park on the top of their building. And again, here you've got some seating outdoors. Uh, then you've got the green roof here with some pathways for people to walk around. Similar situation here, you have some interior space and then some exterior space with the vegetation. This is a neat apartment complex or business center where each roof is like its own little park. And again, you can see there's people on this, uh, the uh, HVAC systems and solar systems located on the roof and then the vegetation there as well. So let's talk about some advantages and disadvantages. The advantages of a green roof are you have reduced runoff from your building because you have water retention built in. Another thing is with this additional thermal mass uh, and the plants on top, it absorbs a lot of radiant energy from the sun that doesn't get passed through into your building. So your internal temperatures are more stable below a green roof. Uh, disadvantages is the additional weight. The additional weight also translates into beefier structure to support the uh, roof system, and that means it's going to cost more. Another thing is if it's not maintained, uh, especially if that uh, lower section leaks, you're going to have serious uh, repair costs, so there's some maintenance involved that are not normally part of a roof system. So that's what I have for you now. That is all I have to say about green roofs.